Hello, my name is Jose Barriga. Welcome to the next video in the conversion of a Sentra 2004 to an electric car. And uh, I've done quite a few things since the last video, and I want to show you some of the things that I've done. Uh, I want to show you first the two or three things that I did that are not really related to the conversion, but they're uh, important, I guess, as a safety in the car. And it, it's good to convert the car that is not that old, because then you can find a lot of these missing parts easily. I mean, this is not that old, but it's not that new. It's kind of newer than other conversions that I've seen. Uh, but anyway, uh, the first thing I did is I replaced this fender. The, the original was in much better, uh, much worse condition. Uh, so this, uh, I got one that is, uh, as a coincidence, is black as well, but this, is, this has been replaced. Uh, what else? I got the remote control for the alarm. This was missing, so uh, it was easy to find, and then they program it in some stores to work with your current lamp system. Uh, somebody painted the lights black in the previous owner and I guess they thought it was going to look really cool and it kind of did but if you drive at night you can see three feet ahead. So I had to remove the black paint from the headlights and I can see now. Um, the um, front brakes were replaced. They were not in very good shape so the front brakes are new. The wiper water deposit reservoir is new too. It was a little tricky to get, but I was able to get a new one. This was missing, so now I have the, the water in the wipers for, for cleaning. Um, what else? Um, the, um, this is this is related to the conversion now. There were a lot of these sh uh, splash shields. Uh, the, the the shields that cover the motor, the gasoline engine were missing. And in a gasoline engine, I guess it's not too much of a big deal because the, the, the gasoline engines are kind of sealed. So if you get into a flood, not, not much happens except maybe the car will turn off or something. But the motor itself will not get damaged. They're kind of sealed. That's one of the disadvantages of the electric motors. They need a lot of vents for cooling. So the splashing in a, an electric motor is not a very good idea. Uh, and it has all these uh, rain shields missing, so I had to find and uh, install the under shields. The, the 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 one on the right was missing. Two of the left were missing. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you very quickly. Um, so the motor is properly protected now. Uh, this here, uh, this here was missing. Now it's uh, it's protecting. It goes all around. This one was missing as well. Uh, the ones under so now the motor the motor is properly protected now um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I work uh, on the car itself on the conversion but before I go that I do that I'm just going to go very quickly again on why I chose to do lead acid batteries uh, because I've received several questions on that and saying that they, that's not the right way to go and well uh, the first reason is uh, price they're much cheaper the second reason is safety. They're much safer right now than the lithium um, iron phosphate or any lithium batteries that they are there. And also, because of the weight, I can only carry two passengers right now in the car. It's, I don't want to put more, more weight on the back than what it already has. So it's a two-seater for the time being, but since we are uh, two, we don't need more seats right now. Also, Tampa is very flat. There are no heels, so not that much of concern about the extra weight because there are no heels. It's not going to get any really slow in any heels, or it's not going to go really heavy on any uh, way down. Uh, also, on the lithium battery side, they're still very expensive. Um, there are very few persons that have them in stock here in the U.S., so most of the time you have to order them from uh, China. And then you have to send like seven, eight thousand, nine thousand dollars there, and hope that nobody's going to keep your money because there, there won't be much you can do over there if somebody decides to go crook. And um, they, they'll become safer and cheaper in the in the in the long term. So I'm, what I'm really hoping to is that once these batteries die, um, I'll be able to get lithium iron phosphate batteries in three, four years and much uh, cheaper price, much safer, and probably will be able to keep more energy so uh, for me it was not the right time to do lithium right now okay um, let me go on through the uh, things that I've done 
related to the conversion, um, one of the first things I did is I, I got my church pa church pass card. Uh, you can get this from the church point uh, church uh, chargers, uh, the company that uh, sells and installs charging stations. And with one of those, you can open the charging stations and plug in plug into the charging public uh, public charging stations, which is what I'm planning to do. There are quite a few here in Tampa, actually. For my surprise, there are a few in, around the city, and looks like I'll be able to use a few of them. Um, I did I installed a vacuum switch. The 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 pump that creates the vacuum for the brakes was on all the time. I just got a, an inexpensive a vacuum switch which is this one um, which attached to the hose and now the pump works only when there's not enough vacuum so it, the, the car is uh, much more quiet the car, the car is much more quiet and more uh, efficient electricity efficient because the pump is not working all the time now uh, what else um, I did a re I, I installed a rectifier here. The power was coming back from the battery to the, to the DC to DC converter, so I, I just installed here a rectifier, so the the power can go this way, but the power cannot go back this way. It was causing a few problems with this one. It, it just can it, it just makes sure that the power comes this way, but never comes back this way. If this happens to be, if the voltage here happens to be higher than the voltage that this can. Create. Also, I, I installed this cover. When it was raining, the water was getting here all over this place. This is this is not good. This is this has to be dry. So I just installed a transparent cover here to protect the DC to DC charger and the connection for the pump. So now the water doesn't doesn't do anything there. Um, I installed a water cooling system for the controller too. This is not strictly necessary, but they, they highly recommend that you install a water cooling system for the um, controller since the, the cooler it works, the longer it will last. So I just bought an inexpensive radiator and, and fans from a CPU computer cooling uh, kit and install a relay, a switch for testing and I reused the original uh, water reservoir or anti antifreeze reservoir of the original car uh, and I just put the pump here that is a wipers similar wipers pump in the um, in, in here and now it works it, it works pretty good it just turns on when the controller overheats and then I have a little radiator and a circling water system it, wor it works quite good and it was not expensive to build. Uh, I built the whole field thing for about a hundred and twenty dollars. Um, what else I did? Um, the RPM sensor was not working. Uh, apparently, it needs a one k resistance between the negative and the signal uh, for this particular model of controller. So I, I, I got the RPM sensor working. Um, the um, I, I had to lift the cart a little more because it was too low because of the extra weight. So what I did, um, I installed these uh, donuts in the in the springs. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but um, there are some donuts here on the top of the spring. Uh, pretty much uh, between the spring and the support of the spring, and they just lifted the car good enough. It doesn't hit anything anymore. It, it looks like a, like a regular car now. Um, what else? Um, I did install the fan, the blower fan, here in the front, and there's another in the back, and they are connected to a timer that I'm going to show you now. Um, so they are they turn on two or three minutes every hour. That's to dissipate the gases that the batteries may uh, uh, may emit while they're charging. And then, of course, I put the um, the cover for for the back for the trunk with some carpet trunk. You can get this carpet trunk in eBay very inexpensive. And basically, then I just have my trunk. It has the full space of the trunk except for the charger to to carry groceries or, or whatever it's needed. And then all you see on the outside is this box on the back. 
let me show you the box in the back so that's how it looks from the back of the car um, what else I did the timer the timer is here here's the timer so the one that turns on the fans every uh, hour for three minutes or two minutes and it's only when it's charging um, here in the door of the gas uh, all the gas the old gas uh, door now has the connection that's what I plug now um, what else I did um, uh, I think that's uh, what I did now there are a few things that I'm working on I'm just going to show you uh, I'm still dealing with the uh, dashboard still not working and I bought a couple of dashboards uh, unfortunately the connections it, it's really frustrating because the connections in the back are the same that the car has but they, they, it looks like the cables have different uh, they, they don't match the cables with the with this too because they don't seem to work either so it's every time more and more clear that I need to build my own dashboard like get rid of the electronics here make a hole and put a different speedometer and RPM meter and just keep the lights maybe it's more and more obvious now that I'm gonna have to build my own and get rid of this that doesn't really work I'm also working on adding the power steering I got a power steering already this is the power steering for electric power steering for an MR2 I got it very inexpensive also on the internet and uh, I'm just going to uh, install it in the car and it should have a power steering as soon as I connect the positive and negative here to a switch and to a relay and then the hoses to the to the current power steering system um, I'm also building uh, another cable for the public charging stations they, they, they accept any regular 110 volts plug so what I'm going to do is just build my cable and I'll be able to use the 110 volts public charging stations uh, that will that, help me with the charging um, and eventually I need to, uh, I'd like to paint the car, the paint is not in that good shape so I'll paint the car too um, that's, I think that's all I have for now yep okay thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video bye